my tutorial by for watching because today I'm going to show you how you can swim with a shark. So just follow me into After Effects. <laughs> Hey, welcome to 2022. Before I even start telling you anything about today's tutorial, let me quickly say thank you for the support in my channel for the last 10 years. So, still fun, still love it. Hey, and if you want to support me in my journey, feel free to subscribe because subscribers are the currency of happiness in 2022. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we swim with a shark. And those are the steps that we need to do for that. So we need to shoot some water footage. And after that we need to find some animal footage and of course we need to animate it. And last but not least we will need to integrate it into the water and as a special bonus I'm going to show you how you can create and animate caustics in After Effects. Oh, I forgot one step. Before we create caustics I will at first tell you what caustics are. Hey, and if you stick with me to the very end, I will also show you how I added the fin of the shark to look like it is outside of the water. And I hope by now you also already know what you can expect from this tutorial. Because believe me or not, you will not only learn how to integrate a shark into a pool. Uh, sorry, but isn't that exactly what the tutorial is all about? Well, if you know how to wax on and wax off, you don't only know how to wax on and wax off, right? Have you just quoted Mr. Miyagi? Or in other words, the shark may only last one composition, but the workflow will be yours for a lifetime. Whew, doesn't make it better. Maybe no jokes from now on? Okay, got it. So, to film your shot, two things are important. First, you need a pool. No more <laughs> jokes, please. Okay, okay. So, just be aware to leave some space for the animal you want to place later on. And here's something else. Yes. Yes, I know, it's way easier if you film the pool with a tripod, because we do not need to track it, right? But here's the secret. Tripod VFX shots are for losers. Hey, come on, focus on the tutorial, okay? Not to say that you cannot use a tripod for some shots, but if you plan on shooting something that you would not shoot on a tripod for real, then why you are using a tripod? Hey, ever thought about that also beginners okay, watch your okay. videos? But you don't get fast if you only train running slow. Stop it, please. Okay, sorry. So let's do this step by step. I will show you the workflow on a tripod on the first shot. In that way we can concentrate on the essentials and you can start feeling comfortable and then I'm going to push you out of the comfort zone. Okay, here's a shot I did a while back in Australia from a tripod. So, let's go from simple to advanced. Let's add a static object, like this submarine here. And that one I have from today's sponsor, Envato. And the cool thing is that I have the option for 3D elements here, so I can download my fitting perspective. But more to that later when we add the shark. So here's my Australia footage and the submarine. Let's match the black and white values of the submarine to let's say this dark spot that is also under the water surface. And as black and white are matching, let's also match the colors. The water is tinting everything with blue and the tint effect is what we are going for here. For the bright colors, let's take the brightest blue and for the black, the darkest blue. And with the amount to tint, we can now define how deep the submarine is beneath the water. Awesome! But we also see that we have now lost all the nice reflections from the water that would sit on the water surface. Hmm. So to fix that, again duplicate the footage. This time we call it reflections. And with an extract effect we can now get rid of all the dark parts which leaves us with only the reflections. Hey, we are getting somewhere. So when I play this back and look at the reference, Everything beneath the water gets distorted by the water and the waves. Hmm. And we can mimic that by displacing the submarine with the water. And here is how. Again, we duplicate the layer, call it displacement map, because we want to create a map 
four hour displacement. And as the water gets darker, it should displace more. And where it is neutral in color, so meaning crystal clear, you should see through it with no displacement. So to get this to work, we can again tint our displacement map and work on the brightness with a levels effect. So the goal is to have dark and bright spots for displacement and a neutral color, gray, for no displacement. Once done, we can disable the layer because we don't need to see it. It's only there to serve as a source for our effect, the displacement map. So before we apply it to the submarine, let us pre-comp the submarine because the effect is depending on the layer size. Meaning, for example, the right bottom corner of our layer will be displaced like the right bottom corner of our displacement map. So it makes total sense that the two comps have the same size. Otherwise, this will just look weird. Hmm. So now you see the submarine comp has the same dimensions as our comp and also as our displacement map. Perfect. Now let's apply the effect to the submarine. For the source, the displacement layer map, let's choose the one we just created. And for the displacement, we choose the luminance values. So the brightness values we have created with our levels effect. Hey, and by the way, this should also work without tinting as the effect is now only looking at luma values. But for me, it always helps to tint it because now I can judge the gray tones better when using the levels effect. And when I bring this slider up or down, you see that the image gets distorted based on the water. Hey, and really quickly, let's add a small Gaussian blur on top of the layer because we get pretty hard edges now. And this is because the waves are sharp as they are on the surface of the water, but the submarine is of course under the water and therefore slightly blurred. Hey, and when I play the footage, this looks even more amazing as the waves are going to displace everything in a supernatural flow. Hey, because those are real waves and therefore create a super realistic look, meaning a realistic look. But we have one issue. When I move the submarine around, it no longer aligns with the displacement map. And now you see what I meant when I said this will look weird. The distortion only fits at the exact same spot. Hey, no worries. We can easily fix that by hitting that collapse transformation button, hey, which will basically treat it as if we would apply the movement not on the composition, but within the composition, in the precomp. You see, once I click on it, the dimensions snap back to whatever is within the composition. That's a cool trick and helps in so, so many situations. Actually, do we have time for one of those tricks? Just 20 seconds? Sure, but only 20 seconds, okay? okay? So let's say we have this huge high-res image and place it on this comp that is way smaller. Hey, and I pre-comp it so everything is organized. But now when I want to move the image, it gets cut off. But hey, we have all the missing information within the pre-comp. So when I click on this collapse transformation icon again, it once again digs into the comp and gives us the bonus info. Again, you can see it on the new dimensions. Do we have time for one more trick? Do it. Okay. Let's say we have a vector image, hey, or simply a mask. Again, I have it pre-comped and want to scale it now. And you see it gets pixelated. Hey, but it shouldn't, it's a vector. You guessed it, click the magic button and After Effects will have a look in the comp and realize that it's a vector and it's super sharp again. And now back to the tutorial. Now, as we know that trick, we can position, scale and rotate our submarine and we are pretty close to a final result. So now it's time to talk about caustics. And in the beginning, I promised that I would explain to you what caustics are. But to really understand that, let's not start with caustics, but with a gobo. What's that you may ask now? And how can I even explain one strange word with another strange word? So wait for it. It will make sense in a few seconds. A gobo is an object placed inside or in front of a light source to control the shape of the emitted light and its shadows. For example, if you walk beneath some trees, the leaves and branches cast a shadow on you. So even if you don't see the tree in the shot, 
everyone understands that you are standing beneath one because the branches and leaves work like a gobo for the sun and cast shadow. And as a compositor it is very important to understand this, as this will make your composition look way more realistic. So speaking of realism, if you have watched Jurassic World you see the gobo effect on almost every dinosaur in their enclosure. So when talking to the VFX supervisor he told me that they did it of course for more realism. But hey, they also did it in shots where there is no tree or branch or nothing in the shot. So especially in close shots it gives them an extra layer of realism, even though it's unrealistic. Crazy! Now, what does that have to do with caustics? Caustics are reflections of light that you see for example on the ground of the ocean or in the swimming pool. So the waves of the water act like a gobo, but they don't cast a shadow, but they refract the light and create those nice shapes. And again, you can use them as another trick within your compositor's toolkit. So how can we create them? Let's make them super organic. And what is super organic? Cells. <laughs> so let's add a cell pattern effect to a new layer and just leave it as it is on default. Now it really looks like cells. And when you animate the evolution, so set a keyframe at the beginning and bump it up at the end with another keyframe, you see that all your cells are moving. Now with the scaling try to get them to match the scaling of your waves. In my case I have to lower it a bit. And now comes the trick. Simply invert it. Oh, and you can also bring up the disperse to make it look even more random. Now we have our caustics layer ready to comp in. And you could also add a vector blur and play with the amount. And if it gets too sharp simply blur it a little bit. Depending on your scene you can play with different blending modes. In my case add works pretty good. Now the caustics are all over the place. So let's simply duplicate the submarine layer, place it on top of the caustics and use them as an alpha mat. Now they only show up on the submarine. Hey, and we can also link the submarine mat to our original submarine. In that way if we reposition or animate it, the mat will follow along. So that was the easy part. Let's directly jump into the pool and from there to Envato elements. Because they have over 55 million assets for us to work with. From footage, to templates, music, sound effects, hey even fonts and photoshop actions. But what I will use now are the 3D assets. So this is super cool. I can choose the perspective and download that. And this is indeed huge. You don't have to search for fitting assets anymore because you have every asset in every possible perspective. Hey, and if you want to try it out for yourself, I have a link in the video description that gives you 70% off your first month. So it's only a few bucks and you can try it out and download as many assets as you want and have the license for them for a lifetime. Okay, and I think I'm going with this shark here. Okay, I place it in the pool, color correct and tint it, apply a displacement map as before and on top I add the reflections with the extract effect and as we just saw the caustics make this look even more convincing. So now up to the final tasks animating and tracking the shark into the shot. So for the animation I will go with the puppet tool. This tool is super powerful. I can set pins on my layer and this will automatically set a keyframe for the pins. And then I can simply move them around and the tool will create a mesh for me and deforms it in a super natural way. And the pins that you don't move work as fixed points. So really play with this because you will learn a lot from this and it is so much fun. Let's now also animate the position. It should start in the back and come to the front in this small curve. Attention! Next tip. Go to layer, transform, auto orient and enable orient along path. In this way the shark will also swim the curve. So up to the tracking. And this is super easy. I took care while filming to not have the water in the full frame because tracking water is almost impossible. So I simply go to the tracking tab and click on track motion. 
which will bring up a tracking point and I place it on the point that is visible throughout the shot. So let's take the middle cross as reference point and the small square as the pattern that the tracker will look out for. And the bigger box is the box where our tracker is searching that pattern within the next frame. So if you only have small camera movement, you can keep the square pretty small and in that way it will track faster. But before we click the track button, let's create a new null object and call it shark track. And we can set this up by clicking on edit target. This is where our tracking data will be stored later. Now let's click on track and watch out for errors. So once done, click on apply. And yes, we want to apply it in both dimensions. And now the null object is following the camera movement. Perfect. And by linking the shark to the null object with this pick whip here, it does exactly the same. So are you still there? Because we are on the finish line. Let's add the fin of the shark on top outside of the water. And this is super duper easy. Let's duplicate the shark comp. But let's not do it in the timeline, but within the projects window, because now we have two different instances of it, meaning that I can now roto out the fin in our shark2 comp, but it will still be within the shark comp. Hey, actually, you could even remove it from that comp if you want to go the extra mile. Now, let us duplicate the shark comp in the timeline, because now we have also copied all the adjustments, keyframes and effect settings and simply switch that comp out with the new one. And here's how to do that. Select the comp you want to switch, hold down the Alt button, then select the new comp in the projects panel and drag and drop it onto it. So all we need to do now is to put the fin on top of everything and of course remove every effect that created the underwater look and we are done. And remember, you can animate the tint and in combination with the roto of the fin you can have the shark swim from bottom to the water surface. Now enough of the talking. We are at the end and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Do you have ideas for another effect or questions about visual effects in general? Leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel and I promise I will answer all of your questions. Hey, now I wish you a lot of fun underwater inside of After Effects.